Hello there, good people. Hi, it's Jason from Green Country Agroforestry. And you have reached that strange corner of the internet where our six foot tall, slightly overweight garden gnomes explain to you how to go about creating explosives in your own backyards. All right, all right, settle down, people. I'm not really going to be showing you how to make explosives in the backyard today. I'm not going to be showing you how to make black powder today. That's not what this video is about. Read the title. If you want information about how to go about making explosives, try a 15 nanosecond stump Ooh. remover. Or how to make your neighbor stop playing that obnoxious music at 3 a.m. But this video, as you can tell from looking at the title, is how to make potassium nitrate from scratch. And this is video number two in this series. So if you haven't watched the first video in this series, I highly recommend that you look in the links in the description below, find that video, go watch it right now, stop this one right where you're at, open up a new tab, go watch that video. When it's done, you can come back here and we'll continue on. I'll wait. Oh, you're back. That's great. Okay, so where were we? Oh yes. What I'm not going to show you. What I am going to show you is how to go about coming across a source of nitrates. Nitrified earth. That's what this video is all about, is taking common materials that you can find anywhere you happen to be, putting them together and producing nitrified earth, a source from which you can extract nitrates if you so choose. I will, at some point, probably in about six to eight months, perhaps, extract a small amount of nitrate from the nitrified earth that we are making right now in a process that began about five months ago. And if you watched the first video, which I just told you to do, and if you haven't done it already, shame on you, stop, and once again, go back and watch the first video. I explain this in detail. This is a one year long process, and we are currently five months in. So, without further ado, I'm gonna bring the camera over here, and we're gonna have a look and see what's been going on in this barrel for the past five months. Now having watched the previous video, we you know we started out with a level of the wood chips right about there at the top. It's now reduced to about a third of its volume over the course of five months. It's gonna reduce another third before it's all done. So we're gonna have maybe somewhere between 10 and 15 uh, gallons of material, black dirt, whenever it's all done. Now, if you look at the very surface, the very surface layer, We've got some wood chips here. They're obviously wood chips. They are broken down a little bit, but yeah, pretty, pretty normal looking. But underneath, I moved some out of the way. I've already reached down in here. Underneath, we've got this nice, rich, already turning black and a little bit gummy. That's a leaf from whenever I had the lid off. Mass that does not smell bad at all. And this is after applying a small amount of urine, just enough to moisten it every day for the past five months. And already, whenever you compress it, it forms a ball just like soil, crumbles apart easily just like soil. As a matter of fact, this is well on its way to being soil. And look how dark and rich that is. That was 100% nothing but wood chips five months ago. And all that we've done is apply a source of nitrogen to it in the form of urine. That's it. That's all that has been done to this. Nitrogen in the form of urine, airborne bacteria taking care of the rest of the work, converting this down into nice, rich, nitrified soil. And within about five months, it'll be done. It'll be totally broken down. There might be a twig or two like that that are left. But other than that, that's it. Now, one thing I want you to notice and take note of here is this dark mass does not have any little threads of white in it. No threads of white. What does that mean? Well, that means there's no fungus in it. It's not fungally dominated. This is a bacterial operation that is occurring here. Bacteria are breaking down that wood into nitrified earth. And look at that. Ah, that's amazing. All right, let's do a comparison. In this bucket here, I have wood chips. This is wood chips that just came from the Greenway site here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And obviously you can see the twigs, the sticks, the large pieces, some small pieces, and maybe a leaf or two in there. That's just basic wood chip material. This is what we had five months ago in this barrel. Five months ago, this 
was wood chip material, just like what came from the green waste site that I spread out on the garden. And there on the garden, we were exposed to different influences. You may notice that we have some, some streaks of white through some of these pieces that are here. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. That is fungal mycelium. Fungus is breaking down this. This started out as a six inch mulch covering over the garden area and over the course of five months, it is broken down to about three inches of wood chip material and a thin layer of soil underneath as the fungus that is dominating that area in the garden has been breaking it down. All right, so there's just laying on the surface of the ground, normal decomposition wood chips, six months. Soaking with nitrogen rich urine over the course of six months. That's the difference in decomposition. Quite a bit of difference, right? Yeah? All right, now, at this point, I'm not going to be adding any more urine to this barrel, none at all. All I need to do is periodically come out here and put my hands down in here. Don't worry, it's not gross. It's just like putting your hands into, into regular, ordinary soil. And just check in and make sure that it's nice and moist. And of course, it is nice and moist today and we have some weather coming up, so I am going to go ahead and cover this up because I don't want to leach out any of the good stuff. Or, let me see. At this point, I'd like to offer a retraction and a, a clarification. The first video, if you read some of the comments, there were many supportive comments, there were many critical comments, and some people brought some things to my attention that I was unaware of. First of all, I made, this, made the mistake of saying that there was not a domestic producer of black powder in the United States of America at this time. It turns out, Lo and behold, there is, and it's called GoX, and the, a viewer commented and brought this to my attention, and thank you very much for correcting me. I was mistaken. There is one manufacturer of real black powder in America. It's called GoX. You can go look them up. They do make real black powder, and I'm sorry, you guys at GoX, I was under the mistaken impression that all you made was a black powder substitute using potassium perchlorate like everybody else does and you actually make the real thing, so kudos to you, and thank you very much for keeping that tradition alive here in the United States of America. You're doing an awesome job. All right, number two is a clarification, because I said that um, I did not want to show you how to make black powder because of legal restrictions, and I actually stand by that, but allow me to clarify a bit further. You see, maybe about 20 years ago, fairly close to where I'm standing right now, there were some school children that were making their very own firecrackers. And fortunately, because they were minors, they didn't go to jail. But yes, the district attorney got involved. Some people were arrested. And there were some legal fees that had to be paid. Now, was it legally acceptable for them to make black powder? I don't know. Maybe. I've read through the guidelines on the manufacture of black powder. And I've found all the rules for what you need to go or what you need to do to jump through the hoops to be able to manufacture it for sale. But I could not find anywhere where it said that you could not make some for personal use. I also did not find anywhere where it said that you could make some for personal use. And that's where an overzealous DAA can get involved and make things really uncomfortable for a person that is seen on video manufacturing black powder, even if it is for educational purposes. I don't happen to have the money to pay the attorney's fees if somebody got a wild hair up somewhere and decided that they were going to make an example out of me. So unless you guys are willing to pony up my attorney's fees, I'm just going to allow you to read down in the comments below, either on this video or on the previous one, and I'm pretty sure somebody is going to drop the information that you're looking for in there. If not, there are plenty of places on the internet you can find that information if you're really looking for it. Okay? All right. All right, what else? I think that's just about it. Is that about it? Guys, let me know if I forgot anything, okay? Leave something in the comments below. There is another video coming up in somewhere in between five and eight months, maybe six and eight months, probably six and eight months, because it's only been five months on this, and I want to give it at least a year, like I originally said in the first video, which you have not watched. Go back and watch it, and I explain this is a process that's going to take a whole year. I'm making a source of nitrates, nitrified earth. Nitrified earth is where you're going to get your nitrates from. Yes, you can extract nitrified earth from places that have had animal manure and bats and all other sort of things like that. But if you don't happen to have that available for some reason, this is the way you can create it yourself from materials that everybody has access to. And I don't care who you are, if you've got space in your backyard, in your living room even, you can make nitrified earth and 
have your own source of nitrates. And then what you might want to use nitrates for, well, that's up to you. Personally, I'm just going to take that rich black earth and use it as a fertilizer, as a, as a side dressing in the garden and make my tomatoes grow up big and beautiful. That's what I'm planning on doing with it. But I will extract a small amount of nitrate crystals for you at the end of the period so you can see what that process looks like. Now, if you are impatient and you don't want to wait for the rest of the time that it takes for the nitrified earth to get formed so I can show you by doing it for you, then you can go and you can use your favorite search engine and look up a physicist by the name of Joseph Lecomte, L-E-C-O-N-T-E. Joseph, I'm pretty sure you know how to spell that. Joseph Lecomte did a wonderful paper a long time ago showing various methods for producing nitrified soil and also for extracting the nitrates and also for refining them. So if you really wanted to produce an oxidizer for some propellant purpose or maybe you're planning on using it to treat your heart palpitations because it is a treatment for angina, or maybe you're planning on using it for... Mm, preserving meat, like you're going to make your very own corned beef or something. Sausage, who knows? You can do that. Incidentally, if you live in the middle of nowhere, nowhere close to an ocean and nowhere close to a salt mine, and something happens that makes it impossible for you to get a steady supply of salt, yes, you can use potassium nitrate as a preservative in exactly the same way that you would use salt. And if that ever happens to you and you happen to be in one of those places, you might find this information very useful indeed. All right, so there we have it. I've shown you a few uh, before pictures, an image of what uh, the wood chips look like before they begin to break down. I've shown you some after, five months in, with just laying on the ground and decomposing with the fungus working its way through it. And I've shown you what happens in that barrel where we apply the urine on a regular basis for five months. Now we're going to allow that to sit for another eh, six or seven months, and it should be ready to continue with the process of making potassium nitrate from. And once again, I'm sorry if you're impatient, but this is a full year process. It does take that long. I can't just go to the store. Yeah, I probably could. I could go to the store, get some potassium nitrate, show it to you and go, look, see, there's potassium nitrate. Yay, all right, great. No, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to show you how this works, people. Okay, so if you find any part of the video informative or entertaining, please hit the like button. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Subscribe to the channel, bang that notification bell, and good people, I'll be catching you next time. Oh, wait, there's one other thing. Shed Wars 21 is going on right now in the Southern Hemisphere. Too late for you if you haven't already signed up in the Southern Hemisphere. But if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you haven't signed up yet. The time, it's running out. I think February, sometime in February. I don't recall exactly when. Maybe the 15th? Somewhere around there. You've got to get your entry video in if you're going to be joining in Shed Wars 21. Don't know what Shed Wars 21 is? Want to find out more? Links in the descriptions below. Go check it out. This may be something you want to get involved in. It's a lot of fun. I guarantee it. And, and it, okay. Now, for real, that's it. Bye. What are you still doing here? Go on. Shoot. Shoot.